Hello beautiful people, Shane here. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Armor Knives Squirrel. Um, I got this knife in on loan directly from the maker. Um, I've chatted with him a little bit. I didn't want to get too much information from him about this knife. I kind of wanted to experience this thing organically and, and, uh, and get a feel for it without any, uh, uh, without any influence. Um, to be fair, I had handled one of these knives before at Blade Show. Mr. Justin from OCD for EDC had one on loan from him. I had two on loan from him, actually. I got to handle them, and I've been intrigued by them ever since. Um, guys, you know there's no list of specs here. I don't do that. Um, I will give you a comparison just because this is not a super common knife that everybody's going to run across daily. So that's pretty much all I'm going to give you there. A comparison with a PM2. As you can see, it's very close. Very close to the same size as a PM2. Um, what does it weigh? Uh, believe it or not, nothing. Um, this thing is just super lightweight. Um, you know, it, it does have full titanium scales, full metal backspacer, but it is a fairly thin blade stock there. And it is a Damascus with copper inlay. I don't, I don't even understand what kind of witchcraft makes that happen, man. But it's fucking beautiful. Um, guys, I, I don't own this knife. And uh, so therefore, I didn't do any hard use testing with it. I'll be honest with you. If I owned this knife, I wouldn't have. Um, it's just not... It's not what I see this knife being for. Um, when I asked the gentleman at Armor Knives, you know, uh, to give me a little information about it, he said he designed this knife and felt like that it was the perfect EDC knife. Um, it very well could be. It, it very well is. It, it is a perfect EDC knife because for what most people want nowadays, it checks all the boxes. It's not too big. It's not too small. It weighs nearly nothing. Um, and it's beautiful. It's classy. Um, I was wanting to do this video a little earlier, but I kept putting it off guys, because I've been trying to wrap my mind around what this knife is to me. And I've kind of decided that, that it's really, the whole thing's just a paradox, man. It, it, uh, I can't label it. And, um, and the reason for that is because two things come to mind when I think about this knife, and that is modern, because it does have very modern materials and, and very good craftsmanship, and at the same time, rustic. Um, maybe it's just this particular model that I got, but you know, with, the, with this copper and this Damascus and, and these, this antique bronze looking finish on the titanium, it, it, it's modern rustic. I know that doesn't make any sense, but I've been thinking of comparisons with this knife and, and the, the few things I can come up with is, you know, that in a world full of, uh, you know, bikini clad blinds, to me, this thing is a brunette and an oversized sweater with their hair in a ponytail. Um, in a world full of Glocks, this is a 1911. Um, you know, this thing just, it makes me feel rustic when I, when I handle it, when I carry it. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a cold sip of bourbon. It's a good cigar. It's a, uh, you know, it's logs in the fireplace. It's, it's, it's all those things to me. Um, <clears throat> that's not a fair review because I'm speaking on how the knife makes me feel, but you guys know to expect that from me. That's what I'm going to do anyway. Um, you know, I, I talked about how knives have made me in the past have actually made me feel a little smarter or a little classier. I, I know that's silly, but it, it's just, it's where I put value in knives. And, uh, you guys know the, the main place that I put value in knives is who made them? Where did it come from? Um, guys, this is made by a 37 year old man, a one man show. Um, in the state of California, he does all this on his own. 
he shipped me this knife and, and, and won my heart before I ever opened the box because handwritten on the box was the words proudly made in the USA. Um, I love that. Guys, it's not printed on the box. It's not his super fancy packaging. He just, he wrote that on there. And, uh, and I appreciate that more than anything, man. Um, the great thing about this knife is, is I don't have to convince everybody in the knife community that this is the knife for them because it's not a cheap knife. Um, I'm not going to price it because, um, as with many custom makers and, you know, with different anos and different things going on, there are different prices. So I will tell you, you know, to check him out on Instagrams, it's R M O R knives. There's no A armor knives, R M O R knives. I will have a link in the description. Um, you can check out his work. Um, you can get prices there. You can contact him. But, but like I said, I don't have to justify this knife to, to the masses because he doesn't make enough of these knives for the masses. Um, you know, this isn't, this isn't some, some hot knife being pumped out by the thousands by eight year olds in China. This is a handmade custom knife made by an American with American products. And, and I love it. Um, I love the, the artistry to it. I love the way it looks. I've done some very light cutting with it. When I say very light, I check the edge on some paper and that's about it. But, uh, you know, that's always the second biggest thing to me is performance. Um, I will admit that I didn't really take performance into mind when, uh, when looking at this knife, when handling it, when doing the review now, however, I can tell you, it is super, it's a super thin blade stock. It's super thin behind the edge. There's no doubt in my mind it's going to cut very well. It cuts paper very well. I'm sure it cut cardboard very well, but that's not what I would own this knife for. I have plenty of knives to do that with. Um, you know, if, if I were financially able to own this knife, it, it, it wouldn't be for that. It would be, uh, it would be purely for the way it makes me feel, the way this knife looks, you know, this knowing that I'm carrying a piece of art in my pocket that, you know, that one guy proudly made in his shop, you know, right here in the United States. Um, you know, I know everybody's always wanting to know about the action. The open action is, is outstanding. Um, it is lock bar sensitive. So, you know, if you squeeze on that lock bar, it's going to lock down. It's not going to open. I don't have a problem with that. That's just the, uh, you know, that's just the way most, most frame locks are. But, um, you know, the, the clothes, is it the slickest knife I've ever closed? No. Is it drop shutty? No, it doesn't have to be. Um, I don't care about that. You know, like I said, there's plenty of shit Chinese knives I could buy that, that drop shut. I'm not impressed. I don't care. Um, Guys, this is a beautiful knife. If you're into beautiful knives, um, you know, check the guy out. Purchase a knife. I think you'll be pleased with it. Is this thing 100% perfectly refined? No, it's not. It, it, and it's, I don't think it's supposed to be. I wouldn't want it to be. Um, like I said, you know, th this is not, there's no CAD punched into a bunch of machines that's just spitting out all these perfect parts to mass produce a knife. This is hand built by a man. Um, it's going to have imperfections and those imperfections make it perfect to me. I absolutely love it. Hats off to you, sir. Um, unfortunately, I, I just, I, I can't make my budget fit around purchasing this thing at this point in time. So I'll be getting it back to him, but, um, I really appreciate you letting me check it out. And, uh, man, just, Keep doing what you're doing, buddy. Um, you know, keep making an American product, and uh, and I think you'll do just fine. So uh, you guys know I appreciate any amount of time y'all spend with me, and that's all I got for you guys today. Peace, love y'all.